Hi, this is Heidi from Garden Crossings, and today I'm going to take you for a tour through the greenhouse just to show you some of what's currently going on. Right now is kind of a slower time of the year, um, but even so, there's still things that have to get done behind the scenes. So let's take a walk and see what's currently going on. Let's start off here in the garden center. So we just wrapped up our holiday season with all the fun winter plants, poinsettias, amaryllis, container gardens, and all of that. So the girls are going through getting everything all packed up and tidied up for next year. So that's kind of a bittersweet uh, thing, but also you have to wrap the season up as well. So a bunch of things you got dumped, so that's gonna head out to the dump pile. Uh, some of the things that we have left, and oh, it smells kind of nice with all these fresh greens. Um, so we have some fresh greens and stuff left, so we'll give these to any of the employees if they wanna go ahead and make up a last minute porch pot. Um, I have some hydrangeas that were left over. These are hydrangeas that I trimmed from my yard, dried them up, and we use these in a lot of the winter porch planters this year. Um, definitely it does work better if you use limelight hydrangea or firelight. Just a nice bigger flower head, it dries a lot nicer. Uh, these here, these are some of the smooth hydrangeas. Smaller florets really don't dry as nice, um, more brittle. Uh, so, But it's more of a, a cap, I guess, shaped, opposed to a cone shaped. Other ones they trimmed were bobo hydrangea. And this is an example of Bobo. Again, smaller florets compared to the Firelight. Um, personally, I don't love them quite as well because I just think that the bigger, the bigger florets do hold up a little bit better. Uh, some of these that you're seeing, some of the red on, these are from the Firelight. So Firelight definitely does dry up a little bit more colorful than what Limelight did. Although these are the leftovers. So all the really pretty Firelight that were really magenta pink those were all used uh, when people were in here creating their planters we did have to section off the garden center into a cold side and a warm side because all of the evergreens just weren't faring well in the heat so we had to put them in a side that we don't do any heating so basically we just took some greenhouse plastic put up a wall and heated this side of the garden center while keeping this side cold one way you can really tell is let's look up at the ceiling when we look up at the top of the greenhouse so you're not seeing any snow up there that's because the heat melted it off whereas when we look up into this greenhouse you'll notice there's a lot of snow kind of caught there in the gutters so we will have to give this a little bit of minimal heat once we get the greens out of here because we do want to make for sure that the snow melts Otherwise that can cause for the greenhouses to collapse. So these are just a few of the things that we have left. Gorgeous, cute little gnomes. These were such a hit this year and they were so fun to make. Uh, the groups that came in to do them really had a ball. These porch planters, not a lot of color. So this is probably why these are still left behind. Plus the girls have been pulling like the ornament balls out of them as they're packing things up. Um, but just here's one that's very natural looking with the hydrangeas, the birch poles, and then a lot of the mixed greens. But yeah, I can, yeah, I can tell the girls have gone through and pulled a lot of things out that we can reuse again for next year. This one's got pine cones and some berries in it. Juniper. Some more evergreens that the employees can take home if they want. We did also buy in some variegated holly with the berries. So these are really pretty used in the containers as well. So all of this stuff will be up for grabs later on today. Uh, we did order a bunch of amaryllis in and obviously this was not a big hit. Um, beautiful bulbs, big bulbs. So these will be going home with the employees as well um, when we do our Christmas party. So they can all choose one and take them home with them. Might as well let somebody enjoy them instead of just letting them go to waste. All right, so let's head out back to the greenhouses and see really what's going on out in the production area now. So as we head back into the production area, it's quite cold back here. Um, these very minimal heats going on. You can see the snow is all piled up there on the greenhouse. So the team's been going through just trimming, sorting, weeding, and getting plants moved to different areas within the greenhouse. 
Um, these are planted here just for temporary growing for the summer because we have vents in these greenhouses so we could keep this cooler in the heat of the summer. Uh, but now they're gonna go back into smaller coal frame greenhouses where we can control the temperature a little bit more uh, for the plants that need to get uh, more heat opposed to those that need to stay cooler. So let's go find the team and see what they're up to. So this is the big leaf hydrangeas. Or these are the big leaf hydrangeas. So they're slowly starting to drop their leaves. So this is a little bit of a challenge. And these are always one of the last shrubs to drop their leaves. But you can see what a mess they leave on the floor. Uh, so the team's out here working, shaking the leaves off. And then um, if they got to try to pull some off or whatever, they do that if they have to. But mostly we just kind of give them a good shake and what remains remains. So you can see here some of the tiny tough stuff. There's a few little leaves left on there, but that's okay um, for now. Uh, here's, a, here's a bunch that they're gonna clean up when they come back out here. So they'll just go through and just kind of give them a little shake and a little pull. And all of these leaves will, will come off. So they're back here getting them all nice and cleaned up. So the really neat thing I think with the hardy hydrangeas is Typically, we don't see this kind of color out in the landscape here in Michigan. It just gets too cold too fast. Where in the greenhouses, because it's such a gradual uh, transformation from the warm fall to the cold of winter, these plants really have the perfect space to do a beautiful color transition. So there's just so much pretty, pretty color that goes on in the greenhouse that we honestly would never see outdoors in the landscape. And I made kind of a quick little move down here because this one really struck me. This is tough stuff. Look at the beautiful yellow with those fire red tips. And you can see like all the different hydrangeas don't fade to fall color at the same, um, same rate and or same color pattern. So that's kind of neat to see as well. All right, we will find people eventually. Let's continue looking. So here's a closer look in the addition that we put on. So like I said, we just had one little space that needed to be finished off. And this is the space. It is now all covered up. In the last video I did, the, the plastic wasn't on quite yet. So the plastic's all up. Now, right now Logan's out there getting everything kind of picked up and tidied up. The next thing they'll do is run some purlon up there across those top trusses. And that's where the basket lines and the water lines and all that um, gets hooked onto. We'll have to put some ground mat down as soon as that's ready. That's one of the last things that get done. Um, so electric, water, lights, purlon, all the fun things still have to be done in this greenhouse. But it's nice because now that it's enclosed, it's a little warmer and protected from the weather. So they do appreciate that. All right, so we will go find the team. We're on a hunt. So it's often funny. People kind of think this time of year, people in the greenhouse business, you know, it's just slow time, nothing going on. Um, but really, there's almost, well, not really, but there's a lot that goes on behind the scenes that you never know about. The planning, the placing orders, the getting the things planted. Uh, getting things moved and cleaned up. A lot of construction happens this time of year. So definitely there's always something going on in the greenhouses no matter what the time of the season is. It's just, it's different. So obviously in the spring it's very um, fast paced, lots going on because you only have a certain amount of time that you can get those plants shipped out because obviously everybody wants their plants in about a six week window or so. Typically we start shipping around the end of March and then ship, well we ship through November, but from the end of March until about mid-June or so is really what we would consider busy time. Obviously the busiest time is April and May, but even into June there's still plenty of gardeners who are wanting to get their gardens started. So lots going on. Um, also this time of year, for myself, I'm doing customer service, working on the website, 
uh, doing photo editing from all of the videos and all the photos that I've taken throughout the season, uh, writing descriptions. So on the website, there's all those plants and there's always a little story on each one of them that gets done mostly by myself. Um, I do have a few people that sometimes will help me, but usually it's pretty much me writing all those descriptions. So if you see an error, it's me, sorry, let me know. Uh, but yeah, just not really much downtime even in the winter here. Lots and lots going on. So I just realized why I'm not seeing anybody out here. It's lunchtime. Obviously, I don't eat lunch at the same time they do. So they're all on break right now having lunch. So um, we'll just keep walking around though because I do wanna show you what so far that they are doing out here in the greenhouses. So I found where everyone is. Say hi. Hi. <laughs> and here's a few quiet ones off to the edge. <laughs> so this is one of our lean-to greenhouses. Basically just means that the side kind of leans off. And uh, these are a lot of the azaleas, the Perfecto Mundo azaleas. So these are an evergreen azalea. They don't really lose their leaves. Some of them have little show of color here and there but these here this is just a great house for these to grow in I'm um, a little bit warmer at times these are more I think these are like zone six seven hardy so they need a little bit more heat than what some of the shrubs that can go down to like a zone three or four uh, need so we keep these in a little bit warmer area here's a beautiful bloom of the perfecto mundo double pink and that really is a gorgeous, gorgeous azalea. Also, the rhododendrons hang out in here. Uh, ooh, Pepe la Palm, which is an ornamental pomegranate. Austin Pretty Limits, just to name a few. So they're gonna continue to fill in this space here over the next week or so and get this all nicely filled up. Here are the pallets of pots just waiting to get stickered and filled. So once the calendar turns to January, we'll be planting, stickering, and just filling these greenhouses up like crazy. So this is just all, just a little look into all the work that's ahead of us here once, once well, not even spring arrives, but once the calendar turns, it's time to get things planted. We did get a new piece of machinery this year. This is a flat filler uh, from, I think, Bolden Lawson is the company. So this is gonna be a huge time saver. Basically, we put a big, huge uh, bin of dirt, drop it in here in the hopper, and then we run the empty pots that are in the carrying trays through here. This fills it up with soil and then out the other end is a um, conveyor belt system that we will then plant the plants on. This works best for the four and a half inch and our quart size perennials and annuals. So we can't wait to get this fired up. We have our old one, but this will be nice to have a brand new one. This way we can potentially run two lines at the same time. And if one goes down, we have a backup. So this year we are planting in the eco pots from Proven Winners, which are the biodegradable uh, containers. So here we've got three pallets deep by onward and onward we go. It looks like we've got 30 pallets of these eco pots this year that we'll be planting up. Uh, so all of our proven winter annuals and proven winter uh, vegetables or proven harvest vegetables will all be planted in these environmentally friendly eco pots this year. So that's something exciting we're, we're doing. We did a trial last year with about 10% of the product and this year we decided that we're going to go full on um, almost everything will be in those. Here's one of our coal frames and as you can see this has got a ground to ground so it's a very small space compared to the greenhouses we just came out of um, but each individual one of these coal frames can be climate controlled based off of the plants that are in it. So in this particular one, we plant a lot of the early flowering shrubs. So this one will stay cooler because we don't want them to be all flowered out by the time we start shipping or by the time the uh, store opens. So a lot of the reblooming lilacs are in this house. So these plants have all recently been transferred into this greenhouse here, this coal frame. A lot of these are more the evergreens, the arborvitaes, the thuyas, the 
Camiciferous, Hollies. Uh, so a lot of those type of plant categories are in here. This greenhouse is pretty much going to be packed full of all the different types of hydrangeas. Uh, the hardy hydrangeas or the paniculatas and the smooth hydrangeas. So that plant category is so huge with so many different types of hydrangeas as well as we just we sell a lot of hydrangeas. They get a whole greenhouse to themselves. Now the big leaf hydrangeas, those are going to go in a different area because they need a little bit warmer. Uh, but yeah, this is going to be just loaded with hydrangeas. It's going to be so pretty when it starts to bloom. You can see here it's a little bit cooler in here. So the heat's not on that much. So you can see the snowpack there on the side of this greenhouse. We got a lot of snow this weekend. This greenhouse is always such a pretty one with a lot of the spireas and barberries in it. A lot of color. So basically in this area here, we're just waiting for the leaves to drop. And once they do drop, the team will go through, get them all swept up and cleaned up so that it's all ready for spring. Now these shrubs, a lot of the shrubs earlier in the video were getting moved from one location to another. These shrubs will stay in this greenhouse. So this is their forever home, you might say. Hopefully you've enjoyed kind of a behind the scene tour here at Garden Crossings in the winter. Not a ton going on, but there is always something going on. Color is a little bit sparse this time of year, understandably so. But even so, we're getting ready for spring of 2023. So continue to um, subscribe and watch these videos as we'll be adding more every week or so with what's currently going on. In the meantime, we hope you're having fun planning for your 2023 garden. You can check out all your favorite plants at GardenCrossings.com where we will ship them directly to your door. This is Heidi from Garden Crossings.